Hi, let's talk about dry validation schemas. Uh, schemas are an important piece of dry validation because it's up to a schema to whitelist incoming data to um, translate uh, from a Ruby type to another and generally speaking to provide all the facilities to execute formal uh, validation. If for this example here we have a sign up contract, we use the schema here DSL, we will see the difference differences in a minute. We have two required attributes, that means mandatory attributes, and we have an optional one. We instantiate the contract and we can pass the incoming data to the call method as an hash. It returns each time we invoke call, it returns a new result uh, that exposes um, a few methods to understand if the validations were successful. The returning data uh, after it was whitelisted, the question and whatnot, and a set of errors. Uh, one error for each uh, key that we have here. So let's see how it behaves when we pass no data. It's not valid, of course. Uh, it's not, uh, it's empty as a result because we passed no data and it complains that both the email and the age are missing. So let's pass then valid data and now it's successful and it returns the same data that we pass it as an input with no errors. Um, what happens instead if we pass strings instead of symbols as, um, as keys of this hash? It complains again. Now this because here we use this schema uh, DSL, where it's a bit more strict and it requires um, symbols to be passed in and other set of expectations that we will see in a minute. As last example here, let's pass not just the data that we expect, that means the email and the age, there are mandatory fields, but also the referral, which is optional, and all those three values are part of the output, whereas these unexpected attribute here is passed as an input but because uh, it was not part of the our contract it wasn't is not in the in the output of this uh, result so off camera I changed this DSL here from schema to params to show you the differences um, so when we pass symbols um, as a um, keys of the hash, the result is successful and the same goes for strings. Remember on before by using schema here um, this kind of uh, data was not successful. Now why is that? Because params is designed to um, accept incoming params from a rack environment and the rack environment uses strings as keys of incoming data. So the first thing that uh, this kind of contract does is basically to translate from strings to symbols and then apply all the uh, validation rules that we have here. There is also a third type of contract which is named JSON. Notice the, here the DSL, which is very, very similar to params. That means both those results are successful. But the only difference there is the way that it will coerce, it means transform uh, Ruby types from one to another, which is the subject of the next episode. Until then, take care and happy coding.